Okay, let's start with Mondays and Tuesdays trades, current positions, and finish with the watch list for today. So since I didn't do a video yesterday, I'll also go to a Monday's trades. <clears throat> Netflix was kind of weak, so I closed my Netflix position in one of my accounts. I sold some CLF. Th this is this is Monday PNL, and I also bought Pola, as I said in my last video. I would do so. I bought it. It open here. And I'm gonna hold it for weeks, possibly even months. Um, Ikala is just flagging, going sideways. Probably not gonna add to the long. I'm just gonna keep scaling out if it goes higher. Pixel works is just grinding higher. Haven't sold any. CTRL. Uh, let's see. So AMD I closed completely. It uh, took out this little bit of a range. It kind of shook me out. It sold it for a tiny loss overall after the week long swing. And now it's kind of weaker. But I'm still stalking it. COTV. Bought it on a dip on Friday and uh, just stopped me out on Monday. Took a tiny, tiny loss on it. Just didn't go. But JNCE is just straight up from where I bought it. I sold like past three days. I've been selling a few shares over the past two days. Labu kept going higher, ATH is straight up. Now NAK is the one I want to talk about. I had 40,000 shares on this breakout here. I sold 10,000 here before the close on Friday. I sold another 10,000 before the close on Monday. So I locked in about about 4, 4,500 4, in profits. And then I took a loss of about 2500 or or a bit less 2000 to 2500 in pre-market on Tuesday because it was a rumored hit piece and uh, it was a good thing I did sell it because the hit piece was real as you remember this thing had a hit piece by street sweeper on Thursday but they, they just didn't have any juice but carry still they obviously had more juice so I just sold it pre-market. I saw someone tweeting about NAK possibly being the target. It made sense, you know, they were, well, you can read up on it yourselves if you're interested. Uh, let's see. So overall, it was a small uh, winner about, uh, so I locked in 4,500 in profits, took a $2,500 loss on the last share. So about 2,000 bucks in profits. Now, Dries is this stock that keeps on giving. Yeah, I, I laid out the game plan on this in my previous video. Buy over this range and short below this range. I bought over this range and it went straight up, 20% move. I actually held a bunch of shares overnight. I sold my last shares on, uh, on Tuesday, well, yesterday. So overall, it was a, more than a five-figure trade. CNX, no, this, all these alum, aluminum and steel names had a lot of strength on Monday because there was some news that China might force aluminum and steel producers cut output. So I bought this CNX, gapped up a little bit, but I bought it on opening range highs, got stopped out on opening range lows, and then it's just been going sideways since. OCLR, now this I, I said in my last video, it will, was going to be one of my main watches, which it was. I still managed to chase it a little bit. I bought it like 9.85. Uh, I, I, I kind of missed the buy. I mean, the, I should have really bought it like 10, 15 cents earlier, but it is what it is. 
at great follow through. I sold some. DCIX, the old shipper sector was very strong on Monday. I tried the DCIX, but it kind of stopped me out. I thought it would go with the others, but just no choose there. And season, I don't remember this one. Oh yeah, okay. So this thing had traded like two times its float intraday. I, I was thinking about that it would hold the higher lows. Uh, so I bought it here around VWAP. I thought it would undercut VWAP and then rally back, but it just kept on fading. So I took a tiny, tiny loss on this one. Uh, there's probably an offering coming on it. Uh, I thought the news were really, really good. They had some data and... Okay, so those were Monday's trades. Let's go. Well, actually, it's also some of the Tuesday trades. Let's go on to yesterday's trades. So CLF, I sold some more. Apparently, so this is a steel stock. Had a great strength on Monday from the China news. And uh, then yesterday... There was some news that the China steel and aluminum cuts may be false news. So I just sold a bunch pre-market just in case it would sell off. Uh, it didn't held up very well. So I'm just going to keep swinging this with a probably like a 1080-ish stop or 1075, which was the offering price. So Pola, I uh, haven't really done anything. SGYP, I bought some. Had a really tight candle on Monday. Just holding on very tight. There's like a little bit of a triangle here. If you look at the 60 minute. Just a super tight chart. Biotechs overall were pretty strong. So I bought some. There was really no volume. I sold more than half of my position for a tiny loss. I had 10,000 shares and I sold some. Because uh, initially after I bought it, it faded back and I just sold most of it so Kala just flagging nicely pixel works is uh, if it goes to like 450 air I may sell some but I still think this thing can go to five six over the next few months OCLR I sold a bunch CTRL had a random big random gap down like it was super strong on on Monday Closed really strong. I sold some on Monday. Then yesterday had a big gap down. It was actually down like 12% or 11% intraday at one point. Just super random. No no news. It actually had an upgrade, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it uh, they bought it back up, so it kind of closed only tiny red, which is good. Because at one point I, I was, you know, uh, I was... I wasn't down on it, but I had given back like 6,000 in open profits on it. So I was like, God damn it. I, I, I was thinking about maybe stopping out if it would go down another 50 cents or so. Just super random. Mm. I say char didn't do anything. Just holding the core from January the 3rd. GNC sold some. Labu, I sold some. I've been talking about this Labu trade for a while. I still think it can go to 50. I sold some. I'm up a couple of bucks on it. So dries, I held some overnight. So overall, a five-figure trade. 80H. My stop is going to be like 50 bucks now. It may go to like 54, 55. So I'm holding... 20% of my initial position. So NAK, I, <coughs> I sold in pre-market. Took about a $2,500 loss on, on those 20000 that I held into yesterday. Tesla was my biggest main uh, position. Yesterday, I shorted it on the first five minute, on the, on the first red five minute candle. I shorted here in the... Actually, I anticipated some. I sold, I shorted some in the mid 285s and then the rest in the high 284s. So I have low 285 average on it. Five, uh, 500 shares, 
my risk is like two bucks to potentially make, I don't know, 15, 20, 25. It looks like it did in February, March was straight up, had multiple up, big, uh, kind of started the speeding up and then it just crapped out at a 7, 8% pullback or even 9%, you know, a 7, 8, 9% pullback here would put it into mid mid low 260s so there's 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 some room it, like i've been talking about this uh declining uh trend line for a while and you know th this played out exactly like i wanted they talk about this potential scenario before so now the key is follow through so cnab is a otc wheat stock i bought it 159 small share since a thin stock i think it can go to low mid 250s uh, sorry low mid twos now ura i did not hold it overnight uh, <clears throat> tried some short really did never crack hopefully i really hope this thing can go to like 20 21 over the next few days but this thing usually reverses on day three day four like here like here, like here, and then it, you know, can very easily pull back 10, 15%. So hopefully it has another strong day today. OPX, they actually sold before the close. It looked good, but I don't know. I just have so many positions, I just decided to close it. Don't want to hold that many positions overnight. I was just so many positions all over the place. Uh, let's look at the watch list. So Asia, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Bought it here in the 59 area. Had some great follow through so far. So I'm potentially looking at it for a short. If it can put in. I don't know if today is the day, but if you can go to like low 70, 71 or something, then has have some kind of a late day fade. Uh, mm, ju just watching it, you know, today will be day three. And um, yeah, could, could put in a nice little fade there, but not very excited about it. CCJ, I'm watching with URA, these things are gonna fade together. Three days in a row, today we were day four. Hopefully it can push 13 or something. SVXY, this is uh, basically the opposite of UVXY. While UVXY is programmed to go to zero, this one is programmed to go up to infinity. This is probably one of the best investments, investment vehicles out there. Um, uh, one of these days when the market pulls back, this will be a potential swing short. If you kind of can blow off to 150 or something like that. BIIB, this is something you can find a re intraday setup where you can risk, I don't know, two bucks or ish. This thing can very easily fade five, six bucks intraday. It's up multiple days in a row. Hopefully, it can push to like 290 or something. AMD, like I said before, I'm still stalking it. No setup here right now. Sino uh, had a good short out of the gate, but it was so fast and I wasn't even really watching it. Oop. Okay, a bunch of long setups. REXX actually broke out into the close, so I'm gonna take it off. IMGN, still flagging, still flagging. It's been putting in higher lows for a couple of weeks now. Uh, looks good. SPLK, ah, not as tight as I would like it to be. Kind of grinded higher into the close. This one too. Like the shippers have been strong lately. This one is still kind of building this little flag. Not super excited about it, but these kinds can very rally big. You know, it's up, it's down multiple day, uh, sorry, w uh, years in a row, and it's a very strong market. Like I talked about this VRX bounce last week and so you know I sold it on 
Friday, I think. Yeah, on Friday. Because I thought the, it was just so slow, it just mean reverted back to support every time and I just took it off because I lost patience. And now, yesterday I had a big candle and th this thing could very easily go to like 17, 50, 18, so I'm uh, not happy about this one. I had 5,000 shares in the low 15s and this could have been a five figure trade potentially, it just lost patience on it. This one is building higher lows of the rising 100 day. <clears throat> uh, not as tight as I would like it to be. A few more days would be ideal so the 20 day can catch up and maybe tighten this formation up. Th this thing has gone sideways for multiple years. Could have a nice breakout. EMES just building, still building a high level flag. You know, a few more days, this this thing, this is the kind of short thing, blow up, do a blow off top, like go to like 28 or 30 or something crazy. Look at the short, I mean, just way beaten down. Um, it's probably not going to do it, but, you know, if it uh, breaks out on a good setup where you can risk maybe, I don't know, 50, 70 cents, I'm definitely going to do the trade to potentially make three, four bucks or something, five bucks, I don't know, or more. Now, Exas would have looked really good if it hadn't had this strong candle into the close. Uh, but I'm still looking at it. You know, biotech's, biotech indices are breaking out and it's just watching all the good looking biotechs. This one had a little bit of fade breakout, taking on the radar. Edit is a bottom kind of a biotech, building higher lows since November, has a range here, looks really, really good. Had a big run early last year, more than doubled, went up 150%. So th this is something I'm very easy to go to 25 once it breaks out. Uh, mm, not as good looking as I thought. I guess it's tightening up. This one, nah, not as good looking. Well, this one is lo really good looking. As remember, I bought it here, failed the breakout, but now it's been building a little bit of tight formation here for two weeks and holding the higher lows all the way looks really good. This one looks extended. A few more days of sideways could be nice. FGen, another biotech, just a bunch of biotechs. They're all waiting to go. Sector is strong. This one would ideally go sideways a few more days. Another biotech looks really good. Recent IPO. Had a couple of decent runs already. This one had some decent earnings, building a little bit of a flag, looks good, a few more days, sideways would not hurt. China stocks have been strong and this one has been, uh, actually traded it on the bottom bounce here, went up like 15% almost. Had a decent trade on it, and uh, now it's getting tight again. Higher lows as a range here. If it breaks this, uh, breaks this area with volume, it could go. APRI set an alert on it. It just looks so good. One of these days, it's gonna break this 280 area and go to like 350 or four or something. That's what OREX did after I sold it. Okay, it just went lower. Okay, so it's very similar to the OREX short, like I've been mentioned mentioned multiple times before. It's another small oil and gas name, like REXX broke out yesterday. This thing can go up a lot. I did trade it here, had a very good trade on it. Went up like 70% in two sessions. Um, this one is just putting in high lows all the way. Getting tight here. ETRM, I have an alert set. 
putting in four tight range candles in a row, just riding the declining 20 day here. Like one of these days is gonna just gonna have a big green candle and go to 10, 12, potentially. That's what I'm looking for. All of these shit stocks are running. So this one completely missed it, did not trade it. I wish I had. I knew, I, I was actually looking at it near the open, but I just passed on it. I, uh, <laughs> I did not see this move coming. BLPH, uh, I don't know what to do with this thing. Just some random, I don't know why this is on my watch list. Season, oh yeah, basically waiting for an offering. I think it may be a buy after it does the secondary. Now OLED, oh shit, really good breakout. If I can get it in the low 66s, I'm, I'm willing to buy it on the dips and then use like mid 65s as my stop. Like use a very tight stop. It's just a great looking breakout. If you are, mm, nothing here yet. And dry is, nah, I'm not really looking to trade it now. I don't see a setup here. If it goes sideways a few more days, there could be a new setup on it. Okay, that's it for now.